Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I want to do a movie review and kind of reaction and discussion for Avengers Endgame. Now, two warnings to put before I start. Of course, the first one, there are going to be heavy, heavy spoilers for the movie Avengers Endgame. So if you haven't seen it yet, or if you want to go and see it again and you don't want to be reminded about it before you see it again, then you don't want to watch this video. I appreciate you clicking on it in the first place, but you definitely want to click off of it now and save yourself. So, you know, warning, just one more time, there will be spoilers. I will be spoiling pretty much every major scene in the movie when I discuss what I liked and disliked about it. And so if you don't want to hear any of those things related to Endgame, don't watch this video. For everybody else... One more warning. The second warning is that I'm not a reviewer. I'm not very, you know, adept when it comes to movie reviews. So I'm not going to be reviewing the movie in a way that may be typical to other movie reviews that you watch on YouTube or people that you read on uh, online or in newspapers or magazines and things like that. I don't really have a background in mu movies. I'm just a I'm just a fan of Marvel and I'm a fan of movies. So I just watch a lot of that stuff and then I just come to my own conclusions based on what I like and dislike. So I'm going to tell you guys today what I liked and disliked and if you agree or disagree, I would love to hear from you in the comments on Twitter, Discord, etc. Uh, but don't take what I'm saying as some sort of, you know, criticism of the movie. I think the movie was fantastic. I think it was great. There was so much effort put into it over, you know, more than 10 years. Uh, and so I, I don't want anyone to think that I'm bashing the movie, but I also do want to express the, the, the way that I uh, the way that I saw things and the way that I perceived the movie in my perspective. So we're going to start off with the things that I really liked. There's three things we're going to talk about. The things that I really liked in Endgame, the things that I disliked in Avengers Endgame, and then the things that I think we could see in Marvel Future Fight for Endgame. Because that's the most exciting part to me personally. <laughs> Uh, at the end of the day, I'm only going to watch Endgame, you know, two, three, four, five times, but I'm going to play Marvel Future Fight until the game shuts down, which is hopefully, you know, 10, 10 plus years from now. So there's way more time spent in this game than watching Endgame. But for the things that I liked about Endgame, I'm going to start with the most controversial one. I think I really liked the humor in Endgame. Um, there were a couple of scenes that I think were a bit too much, too heavy on the humor, um, and I do think that there is a, a point to be made in Thor's scene where he's, where he's, you know, he's fat, he's drinking a lot of beer, he's eating a lot of candy, he's there with Mike and or Meek and and and, and Korg, uh, and they're they're playing video games. The the part where Thor specifically looks at the camera or looks at the the TV and it's got Fortnite and they make all these Fortnite jokes. I, I didn't like that part. That was a bit too much. That was too heavy-handed in terms of product placement. That's like Captain America, you know, beating Thanos, wiping his brow, and then cracking open a, a cold Coca-Cola and looking into the camera and being like, America's drink, and drinking it. It was a bit too much, and, you know, especially with the with the two Fortnite uh, tie-ins. The You know, they had the Infinity Gauntlet last year, and now this year they've got, like, Stormbreaker and stuff. It just felt a little bit too much like um, money was the reason why that scene was in the movie rather than it being a, a believable um relatable scene for the characters because that's that's all about relatability you know you 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 fuck something up thor fucked up killing killing thanos he feels shitty about it uh even when he got his revenge and cut thanos's head off he um he didn't really feel satisfied so he goes into this you know dark place and he just drinks his 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 pain away it makes sense and it was funny and i liked seeing all of the other scenes and i'm and i was looking for in every other scene that 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 thor was in to see that balds to see that big belly i can i can kind of relate to him I, i'm working on my belly as well so it was funny that the the sunglasses were really funny uh, and i and i genuinely liked the humor that they injected into the movie and i thought it was well timed and it wasn't too little, it wasn't too serious of a movie, but it also wasn't too much like Thor Ragnarok. And that is usually something that I dislike in Marvel movies, is too much humor. But I thought they balanced it really well. I also really liked Captain America's speeches. He didn't have too many in this movie, but he gave one when they were going into the quantum realm. Um, and Rocket even says, damn, he's really good at this. And I was like, yeah, damn, he is really good at this. Not only whoever's writing the script, obviously it's not going to be Chris Evans, but also Chris Evans' delivery of the script was really great. He has another dialogue or monologue, and of course Iron Man has another one at the end as well. I want to tie in Iron Man's as well to this one. I thought the three major speeches in this movie by the, the, the protagonists were really good. Uh, they really... Uh, 
added a lot of emotional weight to the movie that I thought was lacking in other places. Despite there being a lot of emotion in the movie, I really thought that the, the voiceovers added a lot. Um, I also really enjoyed, I was, I was pleasantly surprised about the cameos. Now, I will also talk about the MCU references, because there were so many when they went back in time. And you expect to see cameos, but like seeing Ancient One and having her, you know, knock Banner out of his astral, like into his astral form, out of, out of Hulk's body was just amazing. I love that scene, him talking to her, come on, stop it, like why? Convincing her with the stones. I thought it was awesome. It's amazing scene. Crossbones in the in the in the elevator. Hail Hydra. That was a, that was a great scene and it was a great cameo for for Crossbones for Rumlow. Um, Loki grabbing the tesseract and then someone pointed it out on on uh, I can't remember where maybe Twitter that uh, that pretty much perfectly sets up Loki for his Disney Plus show because they could basically pick off pick up from where he left off teleporting to wherever he went. Um, in the MCU, because we know that the the, the the MCU movie timeline Loki is dead because um, he didn't get brought back with the snap. At least it doesn't show him getting brought back. Um, but this other Loki who escapes prison is um, still alive. Uh, the MCU references as well were, were amazing. You know, Cap fighting Cap and saying, I found Loki because that was basically the, the, the major gag in the original Avengers movie. Loki posing as Nick Fury, Loki posing as this character and that character. Um, also, uh, when at the end, when Winter Soldier and Captain America are together and he says, you know, uh, don't do anything stupid while I'm gone, how can I? You're taking all the stupid with you. A massive throwback to the original Captain America. I mean, those, those lines might sound cheesy to you, but I think they're amazing and they reward fans for watching and remembering and it creates this kind of really realistic feeling, realistic bond between characters and you feel like they're actually friends and they're not just actors playing out their roles. Um, I also really enjoyed Tony and Howard. I think the scene dragged a little bit. It was a little bit too long. Um, but of course, you know, seeing Tony get some time with his father, seeing him uh, able to relate to his father because they're both about the same age. They both got a newborn coming or, you know, on the way or already born. Um, so I thought that was a really nice moment. And it's something that we don't generally get to see in the MCU at all. And that's, that's one of the perks of... Um, tackling a, a kind of convoluted storyline like time travel. And of course, you know, Cap looking at Peggy. It kind of sets up the end of the movie super well, which is another thing that I love about Endgame. But seeing him, um, you know, seeing Peggy again and, and realizing what he, you know, what he has uh, is fantastic. And of course, you know, the, the Cap's ending, Iron Man's ending is great, but Cap's ending is just fantastic. You know, he decides to grow old uh, and he decides to go out his way rather than doing what everybody else wants him to do. I personally thought he was going to sacrifice himself on the battlefield like Tony did, um, but he didn't, and he instead went out as a man, just just a regular guy, not a superhero. So I thought that was very uh, nice, and I thought it was a bit unexpected. Of course, Tony's death is super emotional as well. I didn't cry, if you're wondering, but I was pretty close. Um, also, just to, it's kind of a nitpick, but it's mostly a compliment. Um, when Rescue, when his wife, Pepper Potts, is, is saying, you know, we're going to be all right, at first I thought uh, her acting was really bad, and it was really kind of, cardboard uh, in terms of the the lack of emotion but then I realized because then the character starts to emote more with her face and maybe I was reading too much into it but the way that I read her scene is that she was in denial and that she just couldn't accept that he was dead because Iron Man has come back from basically being dead in that suit so many times you know the the, the arc reactors turned off and the shrapnels getting into his heart or he gets blown up or whatever this and that he goes into space he's choking this and that um, but to me, it actually was really impressive, and I don't expect much from Gwyneth Paltrow personally. I've seen a lot of her other movies, but that one was uh, kind of impressive. And then, of course, my favorite scene, pretty much everyone's favorite scene, for Iron Man, Captain America versus Thanos. I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that. I don't think there's any fight scene in the MCU that could ever top that or ever will. I think that's going to go down as the number one superhero fight scene of all time. Uh, just the, the hammers, the, 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 the Thor charging up Iron Man's beam. There's, there's so many cool parts. Um, and then even the smaller fights in between with Black Panther, with Captain Marvel, it just, it just gets better and better somehow. Uh, you know, Giant Man stepping on Call of City, and there's so many moments um, that just make that fight scene fantastic. 
So those are all the things that I really liked about uh, Avengers Endgame. That's just kind of off the top, kind of off the top of my head. I did write down sort of vague uh, bullet points, but there's definitely still more that I liked about the movie. It's just not sticking out to me as much as those particular things really stuck out to me, uh, and I thought really made the movie special and, and brought it, at, you know, a, a tier above a lot of the other MCU movies and a lot of other movies in general, and really drawing on its strengths and building off of its strengths. Now I want to talk about what I didn't like. Now, before I get into what I didn't like, some of you, uh, some of you know, but I think I think some of you don't know my personality. I'm I'm better at focusing on the negatives. That's why I call myself Cynic Alex. Uh, so I may seem to have more negatives, or I I may seem to be more passionate about the negatives. That's not the case. It's just the way that I express negativity. So don't don't take it too uh, don't take it too harshly. But the first thing that I disliked about Endgame, and it pretty much stood out for me from the beginning of Endgame to the end, is Hulk. Um, it was it was quite disappointing that back to back movies, the Russo brothers decide to completely forget that the Hulk exists. Now he has moments in Endgame, but they're all comedic. He's transforming Ant-Man into a baby. He's taking selfies with the kids at the breakfast restaurant. He has literally zero fight time in the entire movie. And the only time I see him spring into any kind of action is when he just jumps into battle with Giant Man behind him after they get out from underneath the rubble. That's basically it. Uh, and so I was really, dis I was really honestly, truly disappointed that they decided to have that five-year gap. And in that five-year gap, they give Hulk, they give Banner the gift of Professor Hulk and then they, they just completely waste it. It's a Chekhov's gun situation. You do not bring the Hulk into Endgame after he got mangled and beaten to, 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 to a bloody pulp by Thanos. You don't bring him back, and then he doesn't throw a single punch against Thanos. That was heartbreaking, uh, and I really thought that was a waste, and really, honestly, that was that's probably the only thing I would change if I could go back and rewrite Endgame. Just give Hulk like a, a 30 second fight sequence with Thanos. Just give him a little boxing match, Thanos can win, I don't care, but as long as he gets his licks in, uh, that's really what matters. Another thing that I th that I thought um, was a bit disappointing, and this is more of a comic book type uh, complaint for me, is the idea of using the gems to destroy the gems. It's pretty well established in the comics that you cannot destroy the gems with the gems, because if that were the case, the gems would have been destroyed in probably in that universe you know, many years before. Now, of course, this MCU universe is assuming that Thanos is the first being to ever co collect all six Infinity Stones, and that's fine. But if it had ever happened before, in every universe that it happened in, that's exactly what would happen. Someone would get the stones, they'd make their wish, whether it's positive or negative, or making themselves supreme being of, of, of everything, of all life, and then they would just, their second snap would just be to destroy the stones. Why would you ever not destroy the stones? So I thought that was kind of a cheap way of doing things, um, and it kind of made me um, sort of slow down and I felt as though the movie started to drag after that because now that we know that the, the, the point of the movie is not to kill Thanos with the stones but rather to get the stones pre-Thanos and then just snap everything back you, you, it's kind of like you're you, it's kind of like the first time you you face the boss he beats you and then the second time you're about to face the boss you just do a big u-turn and or not a big u-turn but you do a big u and you just dodge the boss and you keep going uh, in in the direction that they were blocking uh, so it just it just felt kind of weird to me and I didn't really like that explanation for why they needed to go time tra time traveling I don't mind the time travel plot it's it's always got its problems it's always a bit convoluted but the fact that it was the stone being destroyed by the stones just felt like a bit of lazy writing but you know the MCU just like every movie has its conveniences so this was kind of one of them um, in addition to that I thought the movie just had a slow first hour uh, I know it's a three-hour movie I was expecting a three-hour movie but uh, it just felt kind of slow and honestly I remember the exact moment when I, I started to feel like the movie was picking up and I started to feel like I was going to start seeing things that were not only new, but they were exciting because I felt as though the first hour of the movie, besides a few scenes, like besides Captain Marvel saving Tony and besides them killing Thanos, a lot of the other scenes were either scenes that I had pretty much seen or guessed from the trailers and the teasers or they were scenes that I just thought were logical scenes to come next. Grieving scenes, just kind of paperwork shuffling scenes. Black Widow is basically crying, peanut butter sandwich, etc. Um, whereas, as soon as they pick up, um, I can't remember if it was, it was just before Ronan. Whoever they picked up just before uh, Hawkeye and they're flying in the jet and then it shows to Tokyo. That was really when I was like, okay, now the movie is picking up. 
However, I do have to say, another thing that I didn't like, Ronin in Japan. Holy shit. Did they really need that scene of him killing all those Yakuza's? Because it was cringy as hell. It looked like a bad action movie from the 1990s. It was like weird camera angles, guns, and, and shooting and, and yelling, but you can't see anything because they're trying to save on budget. Guy f falls out of a window. It just seemed it seemed very like bad samurai movie, like but low budget John Wick. Um, and then, you know, no knock on him. My Japanese isn't any better, but man, Ronan's Japanese. Uh, Jeremy Renner, you gotta work on that. His Japanese sounded super American. Um, and it just kind of, it took me out of the movie for a minute, and I was just like, and even seeing that, I don't know the the actor's name, but the Japanese actor who plays the guy that Honkai kills, he's renowned, he's he's super famous, and, and kind of wasting him on this, like, cheesy fight scene where he's, like, slashing his chest, and there's no blood, and he's just like, uh, uh, uh. It honestly, I really didn't like that scene at all. I I would have I could have skipped that entire scene. Um, Black Widow holding his hand like Gamora and Thanos. It just had a lot of weird flashbacks for me. Maybe maybe I have the wrong uh, associations with that scene in terms of other things from Infinity War, but it just wasn't really working for me. Um, another thing that I honestly didn't like too much is the is the amount of dialogue in the movie. I felt as though at times there was just too much talking and not enough action. Um, and they, they certainly needed to have dialogue in places like when they're discussing the Infinity Stones and they're discussing how they're going to collect them in New York and Voromir, etc. But it just felt as though I can't really pinpoint a specific moment or specific scenes where there was too much talking. But I just felt as though over three hours there was too much dialogue and that there wasn't enough. There was too much uh, telling and not enough showing um, for certain events and perhaps if they hadn't explained so explicitly their quantum uh, tra time travel plan it might have been a bit more uh, it might have you know had a bit faster pacing for me but it did feel a bit sluggish because of the amount of dialogue uh, that we had. Another thing I want to discuss uh, pertains to Thanos and the Black Order we do see Corvus, we do see uh, Cull Obsidian and we do see Ebony Maw quite um, explicitly, we only see brief glimpses of Proxima, but in general, besides Ebony Maw, all of the rest of the Black Order, uh, RIP Supergiant, but they basically get the Supergiant treatment, they're, they're, basic, they're, they're not even, you know, there, they're almost pointless, you see Okoye stab Corvus, you see Giant Man step on Call Obsidian, and then you see Proxima holding Corvus when they get dusted, that's it. Besides Ebony, that's it. Um, I really think they could have cut down on some of the other scenes and given the Black Order just a little bit more, perhaps a scene where Thanos walks into a room and addresses them in some way just before their earthly invasion. You don't want to give away the big reveal after Hulk snaps to when they bomb the shit out of the Avengers mansion. You don't want to give that scene away. You don't want to put something in between there to slow it down. I love that sequence of, you know, Ant-Man looking outside and hearing the birds and, and, and Hawkeye seeing his phone vibrate with his wife calling him. Um, cut to, like, hard cut to you, explosions and, and bombs. That was great. But if there was just something before that, perhaps, you know, after Ebony Maw is, is probing Nebula's uh, circuits, it would have just made it a little bit better um, and they would have felt a little bit less tacked on because they already kind of felt tacked on in Infinity War and a lot of fans I know were speculating, are we going to see the Black Order again? These are like Thanos' right and left hands, his lieutenants, he's been with them for, you know, who knows how long and then they just get wiped away like nothing. Um, so I thought that was a that was a bit lame, but there's always going to be complaints with movies of this size, with with this size of a cast. So I know they can't get to everyone, but these are just personal gripes. Um, one thing that actually bothered me quite a bit more than most of the other things I've talked about is the way that they the way that they handled pun intended the Infinity Gauntlet after the bombing. So Hawkeye Ronan wakes up in in looks like the basement or some sort of sub level of the Avengers Mansion in this kind of red causeway with pipes and water and there's a bunch of uh, outriders chasing him and he's got the glove whatever fast forward through that he gets he gets outside he ends up giving the glove uh to spider-man spider-man gets the glove insta kill mode that was quite funny black panther gets the glove i was really excited for that captain marvel gets the glove yada 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 but the hot potato that they play with the glove i really disliked i thought it it, it to me personally it cheapened the moment 
and it cheapened the 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 insane power of what they're holding. Now I understand maybe for plot purposes uh, it made more sense, or perhaps for CGI purposes it made more sense to just track the glove as it takes a journey um, around the battlefield rather than focusing on the battlefield and spending you know millions more dollars CGIing the battlefield fight because there actually wasn't a lot of battlefield specific scenes. It's just kind of stuff in the background where it's like semi blurred and they don't have to spend as much on it. So maybe it was a budgeting thing, but it was just kind of annoying that they're they're throwing around this thing that could literally that literally has the the, the power to change the entire universe in 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 its hand and they're just kind of tossing it around willy-nilly. It was a bit too, I know comic books are supposed to be light and fun and, and you know, they're not supposed to take themselves too seriously, but in that moment I felt as though it wasn't, they weren't taking it seriously enough. Um, personally, I think it would have been better if I was writing the script perhaps, um, to have Spider-Man stay where he was when he activated the insta-kill mode and the, the, the arm started um, attacking all the, the outriders and have the Avengers or some mixture of Avengers and some mixture of superheroes come to him and sort of form a barrier around him with their backs to Spider-Man, fighting off the Outriders around him um, and trying that method. It would be a little bit more similar to uh, Infinity War where they tried to hide Vision behind their, their, their lines and force the enemies to go through them first, um, but it would still... I think make for a really cool pan out scene and with some you know circular camera movements where you see Thor holding the hammers or Thor's got one and, and Cap's got one, lightning bouncing off of them, Black Panther, Okoye, Shuri, all these different characters, uh, Doctor Strange and, and you know even Hulk could get his moment um, and then they could cut to something else, you know Thanos could break through, punch Spider-Man and then Captain Marvel flies down and then they have that little tussle, he headbutts her so on. Um, but I just didn't like, you know, I mean, it's nice to give those fringe characters their moment. Spider-Man webs up to, to Valkyrie. Hey, you've got a flying horse. I like that. But at the same time, it just feels a bit too childish for me. Um, the other thing that I didn't like is Nebula and Gamora's standoff. It was like this weird gun battle. It's not even a battle. They're just like pointing the gun at each other like, hey, don't you move. And I was like, is this a, is this a Clint Eastwood movie? What the hell am I watching right now? Um, using guns in, in, in a Marvel movie where these characters are, you know, bionic super killers or literally the most dangerous woman in the universe, um, isn't, doesn't she supposed to have a, isn't she supposed to have a sword? I was really, I mean, there's, and there's a second Gamora there or a second Nebula there, sorry. It was honestly to me, it just, it was kind of weird. I didn't like that scene at all. And Ronan's just lying on the floor. Uh, yeah, it was just kind of a weird scene. Um, it, it, it had just a weird vibe overall and it felt uh, rushed and, and I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it. To me, it was weird. It was just weird. Um, the second to last thing that I thought that I, that I just didn't like very much, again, it wasn't a, it wasn't a huge problem, but I just I kind of didn't like it, is Thanos' monologue when Thor, Captain America, and Iron Man approach him. So he approaches them, or they approach him, and he has a really good opening line. I, I'm not going to quote it now, or I'm going to try to quote it, but I'm going to butcher it. But he basically says, you couldn't live with your failure, so you, you looked for me, and, and it brought you back here uh, to me. That's a really great line. That's it. End it. Just make it short and sweet, baby. Just, you know, all that for a drop of blood. Just end it. You don't have to say anything else. Go into the fight. We know why you're there. You're there to bash his skull in. Just do it. Um, but there's all this extra talk and he gets into all these things and I'm going to I'm gonna re-remake the universe and I'm going to snap you out of existence. Buddy, we already lived through Infinity War. We already sat in the theater and cried watching Spider-Man get dusted, watching Doctor Strange get dusted while he's making eye contact with Iron Man. We've, we've, we've gone through that. You don't need to remind the, the, the audience on the cusp of revenge what happened a year ago. I, I really thought that there was just way too much Thanos dialogue after that line, and Tony's like, we're stubborn that way. And yeah, that's a Tony thing to say, but it's just like, shut up and fight. That's just kind of how I felt about it. Just get on with it. We're really just here to see you guys throw down. Um, and we've kind of had enough dialogue to this point. And may maybe that's just my own personal gripe. Um, not being a, a super fan of so much dialogue. Maybe for other people's, it, it felt like their comic books were coming to life in terms of all the, the speech bubbles. And I, I've read the Infinity Gauntlet series, so I know how much dialogue is in those, um, but that was just a, a personal issue for me. The very last thing that I didn't particularly like about in, uh, Endgame is wasting Doctor Strange. Now, unlike Hulk, Doctor Strange has a very central role in Infinity War, so he definitely got his dues. He definitely got paid his respect in Infinity War. 
and he's, you know, he's the reason why they come back in Endgame because of the portals. I mean, Wong and his, you know, little students helped too, but Doctor Strange probably made the majority of those portals, him being the Sorcerer Supreme. But the fact that he's relegated to water maintenance duty, sitting there, you know, uh, creating a, a whirlpool, I'm just like, or whatever, a, a tornado, a hurricane, I was just like, man, that's, that's the best you can do. And then he just like, the shaky one. That's it? That's all Doctor Strange gets? Endgame. He pulls out the crimson bands of Sidorak. He holds Thanos like he 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 won he one v one Thanos with the green butterflies in the mirror dimension, and then Endgame comes and he's just like, man, I'm tired. I was in the Soul Zone for so long. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play with some water, guys. You guys handle all the fighting. I'm literally gonna turn my back to the fight and I'm gonna spin water. Could he? Could you not spin water with one hand and cast some stuff with the other hand? I know he has one scene where he kills a bunch of outriders with this like blue magic, but it looks just like Thor is killing them. I, I like, you know. So yeah, I was just personally, I'm a huge Doctor Strange fan, and so that's probably my my own bias. But that's honestly how I felt uh, about that. Finally, thank you for sitting through and and listening through all of my gripes. I know you probably didn't agree with uh, half of them, but that's okay. Those are the things that I liked about in, uh, Endgame. Those are the things that I disliked about Endgame. Now let's talk about what we can expect in Marvel Future Fight. 100%, we know we are getting, at some point, a Thor uniform. Now, no. Despite what you might think, it's probably not going to be Fat Thor. They're not going to put Fat Thor in Marvel Future Fight because it's, it's just bad. It's going to look bad. They're not going to, you know, embarrass their characters like that. They're not going to put Pajama Ant-Man in Marvel Future Fight, even though he has scenes in his pajamas in basically every single movie he's in. Um, so we're gonna get, most likely, long hair, bearded, braided bearded Thor with Stormbreaker, and then possibly also with Mjolnir. Now, the Mjolnir thing is interesting, we'll get to that later, but we're also definitely getting, and again, this is coming from the App Store post, so there's a possibility that I'm wrong, but I'm like 90% sure that I'm right, a Captain Marvel short-haired uniform, which I actually thought looked really good on her. I didn't think Brie could pull it off, but I actually really liked it. So, do I expect big changes for Captain Marvel with this uniform? Honestly, no. I do think they need to tweak her a little bit. I think they need to tone down her damage just a smidge. They need to take some of her fourth skill damage and move it on to three and two, just so that she's a little bit less bullshit in PvP, but she'll still be just as good for PvE. Um, I guess they could add a small buff, but she really doesn't need anything. She's, she's so dominant right now, it's insane. Uh, as far as Thor goes, he definitely needs a lot of help. Buddy needs a completely reworked uh, sixth skill. I don't really know what it could be because his sixth skill right now is beautiful, where he jumps up with the hammer and, and like lightning pounds the whole universe. Um, but if he had some sort of like super hurricane, lightning, spinning, barbarian type thing with both hammers, that would be amazing. Throwing both hammers and having them just go completely berserk, kind of like Nightcrawler's sabers, would also be acceptable. There's a lot of things he could do for his sixth skill that would be acceptable. Uh, he just needs a new one. I think if he just got a new sixth skill, that would be amazing. If he also got a small rework, to some of his passives or some of his skills, I think that would put him over the top and possibly let him compete with Captain Marvel for best universal hero. No one's competing with Thanos. After that, I really don't know. So the rest of these suggestions are honestly just going to be, um, what do you call it, uh, ideas, like just just, ran just kind of semi-random ideas. So a lot of people have said Captain America with Mjolnir. I think that's a strong possibility. Uh, again, it's just my hope, but it is a possibility. We could get another uniform, or they could patch his existing uniform. And someone actually pointed out Captain's Fist has a jump at the end. And I know this, this is already a pretty long video, but I want to show you at the very end of the skill, he jumps up and he just punches the ground with his fist. I could totally see him punching the ground with the hammer. Uh, so, so, and you know, they they buffed the skill on they bu they buffed the damage on that fourth skill tremendously. So it's I honestly think it's it's actually a possibility. Additionally, I think that Iron Man could get the kind of Infinity Gauntlet uh, uniform. Whether they patch his existing uniform and kind of just put the the stones in, or they provide another uniform, I don't know. But I think that would be a really cool kind of like second reveal, and it would make people even more happy that they purchased this uniform in the first place. It would kind of just be like a free buff. Um, from that, I don't know what skills they would change, but it would be very cool to see them change his sixth skill. I know they've already changed it, so maybe they would change his fourth skill, but he definitely needs that skill where he opens up his back panel, Thor comes and supercharges him, and he blasts. 
So if they changed jet mode and they added that, you know, crazy blast as like a channeling skill with Thor jumping in, they already have Thor in Rocket Raccoon's uh, new st uh, skill. I think that would be absolutely amazing. We could also see the possibility is there for an updated War Machine uniform because we do have this one from Endgame, but we don't have the super jacked one at the end of Endgame for that final battle scene. This is kind of a tweaked version between the first one we see and the second one, um, but it is possible that we could get another one for War Machine. We could also get, it's it's far-fetched, but it's possible to get a slightly updated version of Black Panther's uniform because he's fallen behind and no one wants to buy that Black Panther pack. Sorry, guys. 3,300 crystals that no one is willing to spend anymore, and he definitely deserves a buff considering how much powerful Cap and Wolverine and Mr. Fantastic are now compared to him. We could also see, because of Black Panther, Okoye as a new character. We could get Shuri's potential unlocked to level 70, which would be super nice. Speaking of new characters, we could also see Rescue coming in as a kind of tag team for Iron Man, and I think that would be very cool. Um, we could also see... Actually, that's it. Uh, the last one was Thor, uh, Iron Man Tier 3 with Thor's move. I kind of jumped ahead of myself when talking about his Infinity Gauntlet. So those are all of the ideas that I have for Endgame as far as Marvel Future Fight. Those are all the things I liked and disliked about Endgame. Let me know what you think. Hit me up in the comments down below. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.